Hi and welcome to Outline of Pathology. In our last video, we started a new topic, Fluid and Hemodynamic Disorders. In that video, we discussed the disturbance in body fluid and electrolyte, that is edema. I would suggest you watch that video first and come back. Hope you have all watched it. Now, as a sequel, eh, we will proceed with the topic further. In this video, we will discuss two disorders of circulating volume of blood that is hyperemia and congestion okay come on let's dive into the topic Hyperemia and congestion both are kind of similar disorders that is both are localized increase in volume of blood both hyperemia and congestion both are nothing but localized increase in volume of blood but the difference comes in the cause cause of that localized increase in volume of blood in the first one that is hyperemia otherwise called active hyperemia localized increase in volume of blood is due to arteriolar or arterial dilation whereas in venous congestion otherwise called passive hyperemia the increase in volume of blood is due to impaired venous drainage in simple terms in active hyperemia the increased volume of blood is due to increased input via the inlet and in venous congestion the increased volume of blood is due to blocked outlet anyways localized increase in volume of blood due to arterial dilation is called hyperemia otherwise active hyperemia and localized increase in volume of blood due to impaired venous drainage is called venous congestion or passive hyperemia. Both these can be acute where the condition develops rapidly or chronic where the development of the condition is prolonged and gradual. Now coming to active hyperemia or simply hyperemia, we know it is due to dilatation of arteries this dilatation happens either through sympathetic neurogenic mechanism or due to some vasoactive substances examples include inflammation or blushing in blushing there is flushing of the skin with increased input of blood due to some emotional response other examples include menopausal flush muscular exercise etc Clinically, hyperemia is characterized by redness and raised temperature in the affected part. Coming to passive hyperemia, here the affected tissue is bluish in color due to accumulation of venous blood. Why? Because here the problem is blockage of venous drainage, not arterial dilation. Passive hyperemia or venous congestion can be of two types, local and systemic. Example of local venous congestion is that which occurs in portal venous obstruction in cirrhosis of liver. Systemic or general venous congestion occurs in left-sided and right-sided heart failure. Depending upon which side of the heart fails, fluid accumulation occurs upstream to that particular side that is if the failure is left-sided the congestion occurs in the lungs leading to chronic venous congestion lungs or CVC lungs why because the organ upstream to the left side of the heart is only the lungs remember the blood circulation of heart we discussed in the last video on the other hand right-sided heart failure will lead to systemic venous congestion which can affect so many organs like cvc liver cvc spleen cvc kidney etc 
now will be the right time to discuss the morphology of chronic venous congestion of different organs first we will see cvc lung we already saw cvc lung occurs as a sequelae to left heart failure grossly the section surface of affected lung is dark and rusty brown in color referred to as brown in duration of lungs histologically the alveolar septa are widened due to the presence of interstitial edema and dilated and congested capillaries in the septal wall these dilated and congested capillaries can rupture and this may result in minute intraalveolar hemorrhages when such a thing occurs the breakdown of erythrocytes liberates hemosiderin which is taken up by alveolar macrophages and these are seen in the alveolar lumina and is referred to as heart failure cells why heart failure cells because we see this in cvc lung which is caused by left sided heart failure heart failure cells are shown here in the diagram okay coming to cvc liver this occurs as i already explained in right heart failure or sometimes due to occlusion of inferior vena cava and hepatic vein grossly the cut surface or section surface shows characteristic nadmac appearance nadmac appearance is a red and yellow mottled appearance cvc lung shows brown in duration cvc liver here is nadmac appearance microscopically the changes are more marked in the centrilobular zone why because that is the zone which is farthest from blood supply and any disorder affecting the blood supply affects this area more so changes are more severe in the centrilobular zone and what are the changes here the central veins as well as the adjacent sinusoids are distended and filled with blood also the hepatocytes or liver cells in these areas undergo degenerative changes eventually leading to centrilobular hemorrhagic necrosis what is necrosis we already saw in some other video you can revise that long standing cases can show centrilobular fibrosis and eventually end up in cirrhosis also coming to peripheral zone as i told you it is less severely affected and mostly the change seen is only fatty change of the hepatocytes what is fatty change again you can revise my previous videos coming to cvc spleen this again occurs in right heart failure and also in portal hypertension grossly there is progressive enlargement of the spleen histologically the red pulp shows sinusoidal dilatation and recent and old hemorrhages the sinusoids sometimes may get converted into capillaries called capillarization of sinusoids there is also hyperplasia of reticuloendothelial cells in the red pulp fibrous thickening of the capsule may also be seen sometimes some of the hemorrhages overlying the fibrous tissue gets deposits of hemosiderin pigment and calcium salts and these are called gamma gandhi bodies remember cvc spleen presents with gamma gandhi bodies which are nothing but organized structures of deposits of hemosiderin pigment and calcium salts in some of the hemorrhages overlying the fibrous tissue coming to cvc kidney the kidneys just like the spleen are grossly enlarged but the microscopic changes are rather mild 
the renal tubules may show degenerative changes like cloudy swelling or fatty change and the glomeruli shows mesangial proliferation okay that's all for hyperemia and congestion we will continue this topic on hemodynamic disorders in our next session also and we will be discussing another disorder of circulating blood volume which is very important shock as usual pdf notes are available for download in the description for further guidance you can mail me and for more videos keep the channel subscribed until we meet in our next session thanks for watching bye